Okay, time to talk about vectors. Now, a vector is a directed line segment, like this one. Notice it has a starting point. We call this the initial point. Here I'm, I'm, I've labeled this point P, and it's at the coordinate 2, 4. And then it has an ending point where it stops. I, I label that point Q, and that's the point 5, 8. Now because this has an initial point of P and a terminal point of, of Q, sometimes we'll label that vector PQ like this and put a little arrow above it to indicate that it's a vector. Some other times maybe we won't put the arrow above it. We'll just represent the vector as a bold face, PQ. But anyway, this is the vector. Now, with vectors, what we're concerned about is not necessarily where they start and stop, but the direction of the vector, which way is it pointing, and also the length of the vector. We call that the magnitude. So as long as we can talk about the direction of the vector and the magnitude of the vector, we don't really care where it starts. It might be simpler, though, if we could start it at the origin. So let's do that. Let's, let's just take this vector and subtract 2 from, you know, just move, move everything over 2 units. That's like taking the 5 component from the terminal side, I mean terminal point, and subtracting the 2 from the initial point. So notice, 5 minus 2. That moves every point over 2 units to the left. Now, we want to take 8 minus 4. In other words, shift everything down 4 units. Now, what we've done is we've not changed the magnitude or the direction of the vector. We've simply scooted it over. And now we have the vector ending having a terminal point of 3, 4. So it has an initial point of 0, 0 and a terminal point of 3, 4. And now we might want to name this vector something like V. And just, and just instead of having the initial and terminal point, we just have the terminal point. And we designate that vector to be 3, 4. And notice these, uh, these little, uh, little brackets that we have here. This is the way we, uh, when you see that, you know you're talking about a vector. Okay. So this vector, it's understood to start at the origin, and this is the terminal point here. Okay, now, I want to talk about the magnitude of the vector. The magnitude is simply the length, so, and it's always positive. Now notice, this magnitude I get by just by taking the square root of the 3 squared plus the 4 squared, squaring both of those, adding them, and then taking the square root. And notice, that's just Pythagorean theorem. See, so, so what we have here is we have the x, I square that, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. See, the magnitude. So there you have it. There's the magnitude, which is like the hypotenuse of that. And it is, it is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Okay, so that's one of the things that we want to be able to do. When we're given a vector, uh, well, two things. We want to be able to take a vector that's defined with an initial point and a terminal point and put it in this form right here. And we call that component form. Okay, this is component form. Then we want to be able to take that component form and find the magnitude of the vector. So we have 3 squared plus 4 squared. The square root of that is 5, and that's the magnitude. So we want to be able to put a vector in component form and find the magnitude of it. Now, we also want to be able to find the direction angle, this angle right there that I'm designating as theta. We want to be able to find that. Now, notice that this uh, 4 here, the y component, is the angle is the side opposite theta, and the x component down here, the x length, the x component of the vector is actually the length of the adjacent side. And of course, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's four over three. So we right away we get this, uh, we get this connection here. We we have a way of relating theta, and the four and the three, and we do that through tangent. So tangent theta equals four thirds. That means 
that theta equals the inverse of tangent of four-thirds, the inverse tangent of four-thirds, which in this case is 53.13 approximately degrees. So we found the direction angle. Now you have to be careful when you're finding direction angles because remember that inverse tangent will only give you values in quadrant one or four. It's only going to give you values between negative 90 degrees and positive 90, not including those two. So if your vector is actually pointing in quadrant two or three, you have to do something else. So let's, let's see what you have to do. Notice that if I want to find this angle theta, I'm going to do inverse tangent of negative 4 over negative 3, which is inverse tangent of 4 thirds, which we already found that is approximately 53.1 degrees. Now, that's obviously not the direction of that vector. So here's what we have to do. Whenever we get a vector that's pointing in direction in, the, in quadrant 2 or 3, we have to add 180 degrees to it. So the real direction angle is 53.1 plus 180. Now, if we were in radian mode, we wouldn't add 180 degrees, of course. We would add pi. Okay. Now, here's our vector. And let's suppose we have another vector. Okay, so this is vector u. So we have the vector v and the vector u. I want to talk about vector addition. So we know now how to put a vector in component form. We know how to uh, find the magnitude of a vector. And we know how to find the direction angle of a vector. Now what I want to do is talk about how we add vectors. So here we have u and v. And if we want to add these vectors, we're going we're gonna to make it, we're going to observe something here. Uh, first of all, notice what I did here. I took this vector u, and without changing its direction or magnitude, I made a copy of it and just shifted it up here. I just moved it up so that its initial point is at the terminal point of v. Now I'm going to do the same thing for v. I'm going to make a copy of it and move it over here. Now notice how it makes a parallelogram. That par notice a parallelogram there. Now, if I add this vector u plus v, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the component parts. So I'm defining for you now how we add vectors. We add the component parts, the corresponding components. So we add the 3 and the 5 and the 4 and the 2. See? We just add the corresponding components. And notice when we do that, we get this vector 8, 6. Well, if I were going to plot that vector, notice what happens. It lines up where these two at the end of this parallelogram. Notice if we, if we go over 8 and up 6, that's this point right here. So that's like that terminal. Uh, it's the terminal point is where those, it's at the end of that parallelogram. So it's a, like a diagonal through the parallelogram. Okay. Now, let's look at subtracting vectors. So I've got u and v here, same vectors. Now I want to subtract them. And of course, so, so I'm going to do v minus u. So it works out just like you think. We're going to take subtraction, the 3 minus 5 and the 4 minus 2. See, corresponding parts. 3 minus 5, 4 minus 2, that's v minus u. And it's just intuitive it would be that way. So we get this vector, okay. that vector right there. That's negative 2, 2. Now I'm going to make a copy of that vector, and let's see what this looks like geometrically. If I make a copy of it and move it up here, notice that when I slide it up here, the subtraction, if you're looking at it from just a visual, what does this look like visually? Well, if you're doing V minus U, the visual representation of that is going to be a vector that starts at the terminal point of u and then ends at the terminal point of v. That's how we perform subtraction. Okay, And those two vectors here, of course, this is the vector. This is the subtraction vector, but this is the way we could represent it. Now, Let's think of, so, so we looked at how to add sub vectors, how to subtract vectors. 
Now let's look at scalar multiplication. In other words, what happens when we multiply a vector by a scalar, a number from the number line? Just a number. Let's, let's see what happens. 6 times this vector, 3, 4, that literally means this, right? We've got 6 times that means 6 of these. Well, look. I'm going to, I know how to add vectors now, I just add corresponding parts. So I add the 3 plus 3 plus 3, there's 6 of those. The 4's, I add 6 of those 4's. And look what happens. What, what it is, is there's 6 of these 3's and 6 of these 4's. So it's just like I just multiplied 6 times 3 and 6 times 4. And there we have, so that's how we do the scalar multiplication. Now notice this, that if I wanted to get the magnitude of that vector, see? So I'm getting the magnitude of this vector. Notice what would happen. I would square the x component, square the y component, and here I just factored out this 6 squared because I have a 6 squared here and here. Notice what happens. This 6 squared, I can take the square root of 6 squared, and I get this, which is just 6 times the magnitude of the v. Notice the magnitude of v is just 3 squared plus 4 squared, the square root of that. And then the 6, it's just 6 times the magnitude, right? So it's like the magnitude of 3, 4. So if you're, if you're asked, find the scalar uh, multiplication here, 6 times this vector. And, and then you're asked, well, what is the magnitude when you multiply by 6? Well, it's 6 times the magnitude of the vector before. Now, let's think about this then. Okay. Let's think about a vector, this one right here. And let's suppose that we want a vector that has a magnitude of 1. In other words, we want a unit vector. Well, if we want a unit vector, let's think about what, what that would mean. L let's get the magnitude of the vector, which is 5. We've already done that. Now let's think about what would happen if we divide this vector v by its magnitude. So I've got this 3, 4, and I just multiply through by 1 fifth. Now notice what we get then is we get a, a smaller vector. Notice that here's the vector v, and here is the vector uh, w. And notice I'm, I've got a little hat above the w, that's how we signify unit vectors. So I've got a unit vector here, and we want to, when I say unit vector, of course, it means that the magnitude is one. So let's check that out. Let's take the uh, x component, square it, plus the y component squared. And notice if we do that, we do get 25 over 25, the square root of 25 over 25, which is one. So that verifies that that's a unit vector. Now, there are a lot of times when it's helpful to us to work with a unit vector. We might want to, for example, we might want a vector that is in the same, that has the same direction as V, but has a different magnitude, maybe a magnitude of seven, for example. Well, if we had a situation like that, if we convert v to a unit vector by dividing by its magnitude, then all we have to do is multiply through by 7, and we will have a vector in the direction of v with a magnitude of 7. Now, let's think about two very popular unit vectors, and that is the i and the j. Now, notice the i, you can think of it as just a vector on the x-axis pointing at the point 1, 0. The j on the y-axis pointing at 0, 1. Now let's think about our vector v, 3, 4. We could, if we wanted to, rewrite that vector this way. 3 times i plus 4 times j. Yeah, there's nothing stopping us from doing that. Notice that if, if I expanded this 3i plus 4j out, I would have this, which is this, and I get 3, 4. Notice it's the same thing. We call this a linear combination. 
So that's another way that we could write a, a vector by using these unit uh, vectors up here, the i and the j. Now, let's look at another way we could write a vector. I'm going to call it trigonometry form. Okay. We want to write it this way, the magnitude of v times the vector cosine theta sine theta. And what we're saying is we're saying that theta is the direction angle. So let's look at a picture of it. Here we've got a vector. It's got theta here. And let's suppose this is the vector v1, v2. So this vector is pointing at v1, v2. So we have a length down here, a horizontal length, v1. And then we have the v2 here. And of course, the hypotenuse is the magnitude. Now let's think about this. Let's think about the cosine of theta. Well, it would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is v1 over the magnitude of v. Little algebra gives v1 equals the magnitude of v cosine theta. Ah, look. That's just what we have here for the x coordinate. Now let's look at the y coordinate. Cosine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Doing the algebra, and you can see we get this. So you can see how that we could write this in trig form. What we need, though, is we need the magnitude of the vector and we need the direction angle. And then we have, uh, we can write the vector this way. So we've got a couple of forms. Uh, well, you know, we've got this form. Uh, I guess we were calling this component form of the vector, where you just have the terminal point, the square root of 3, 1, and we're understanding this vector has the initial point at the origin. Now, we also have the linear combination, where we have the, the, the horizontal component and the vertical component. Then we have this trig form. So let's, let me write this in trig form. We need the magnitude. So I'm going to get the magnitude, square the uh, x component, square the y component, add those, and take the square root. Then I need the direction angle. So I'm going to take the inverse tangent of the y over the x, and I get pi over 6. Now, remember, you have to be careful when you're doing this because this works if your vector is pointing into the first or fourth quadrant. If it's not, you can do this inverse tangent, but remember you have to add pi to it to get your direction angle. So here's what we have now. We have this trig form, 2 cosine pi over 6, sine pi over 6. 